I've debated making this video for a few weeks now. Like, there's so much going on in the world. I, I don't even know where to start with things. Like... Some of you may already know I live in Atlanta. And... Atlanta has been like kind of a hellscape with some of the things going on lately so it's particularly close to home and like honestly at this point I feel like I need to make this video for me more than anything so if you are privileged and lucky enough to feel tired of hearing about these things can then go ahead and skip this video. I sadly am not that lucky to be privileged to be able to ignore this and just turn off a YouTube video and move on with things. It's my life. So I, I, I gotta speak my truth. I wanted to make this video more about me getting my thoughts and my emotions out more than anything. There's been several people on YouTube way more eloquent than I am that have already made videos and said their piece and I, I, I've i watched them in there. Some, it's powerful stuff but I needed to get my truth out. So since all of 2020 has basically been nothing but a dumpster fire. And we're not even halfway through yet. I figured like, let's just go through this chronologically. When I was originally planning this video, I was going to do like everything that's happening in the world and in publishing, but there's enough of a dumpster fire in publishing that I can do a whole video on just that so instead of making one super long video I'm going to make two shorter ones so this is just going to be about like all the fuckery in the general world and we'll start chronologically I guess technically the first thing would be COVID even though one of the things I'm going to talk about later, I guess, technically happened before the official start of COVID. I am of the belief that COVID has been around since late last year at the latest. And so we'll start there. COVID. COVID, COVID, COVID. It's so funny how so many people are like, all lives matter and pro-life and all that stuff but as soon as it comes to like having to wear a mask to protect people like me because I am immunocompromised. I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis when I was like 16 so my my body often attacks itself. I have a compromised immune system it's all fun let me promise you that it's so much fun and like so people going out without masks without like taking any kind of precautions but they claim that they all lives matter and all this other bullshit just goes to prove that no not all lives matter just healthy cis white lives but like COVID has become such a disruption in the world that like every aspect of life has been affected down to like even the littlest thing like my job my job's not a little thing but like every every part of life has been affected for example like I was planning on doing more YouTube videos once we were in quarantine because I figured, oh, I'm home now, don't have to go into work, even though I was still working. 
I'll get into that in a second. But I figured I would have a lot more time on my hands because usually if you have been following my channel, you know during the school year, I tend to post a lot less because I'm a teacher. So teaching is kind of a 24-7 job and I usually don't have the time or energy during the school year to make these videos. So my big plan was, okay... We're in quarantine. I'm going to be home all day. I can make some videos, post some things. Cool. Except virtual teaching is, is a tough one. Like I, I just said teaching is a 24 seven job, but virtual teaching is like a 26, eight job. I, I heard from parents more, I heard from students more, I was put under a lot more pressure from the administration and the county about getting work done. The day before we went into quarantine, we had a, we happened to, it was, just happened to fall into place that we had a teacher work day. On that one eight hour day, I had to have lessons posted for the next two weeks of school because at the time that's all we thought we would be out. And I, I know personally just things never stopped from there. And just there's a lot of health issues in my family. Both of my parents have had cancer. They're both thankfully doing pretty well. They survived their cancer. Um, so has my uncle and my grandfather is... He's, he's older, so that in itself brings health issues. I, I mentioned my own health issues. So like, COVID was a very scary thing for me and my family. And especially since my dad's job is considered essential. So he was out there every day around strangers and like, I... It, it was terrifying. Like, it still is terrifying because he's still out there. And in a way, it's even more terrifying because at least at the beginning, people pretended like they cared and pretended like they were going to do the right thing. But now that it's summer and it's warm out, YOLO, we don't care anymore. Let's go to the bar. Let's go have house parties. Let's do all this stuff. And the amount of hospital hospitalizations for COVID going back up because it's warm out. People don't care anymore. Like it's summer. So that means magically COVID's gone. So things are still kind of very terrifying for me right now. But is I, I, I don't really know when this fear of life is going to start slowing down. I know I'm terrified to go back to work in the fall because I'm I'm pretty certain they're gonna try and make us go back. And I have I work at a school of twelve thousand teenagers. That's what twelve hundred teenagers. And like they're teenagers. A lot of them aren't going to be super strict about following procedures and honestly a lot of the CDC procedures would not work for a school my size there's no way that we're going to be able to walk six feet apart from each other when the hallways are barely six feet wide I it a lot of the stuff is going to be near impossible even if they cut my class sizes in half my class sizes are usually around 40 kids. <laughs> 20 kids in a classroom is still a lot. You're not going to be able to do the six feet apart. You're then I teach at a Title I school. Like I don't see us getting the partitions and all the extra health stuff that a more affluent school would get. So I, I'm terrified. I don't know what's going to happen. But more... I, 
I don't, I don't even know if I can call it a more immediate threat to my safety, but a more like in my face threat to my safety is, I don't know if you guys could tell, but I am a black person. I am a black woman living in America. Shit is scary. Like, in February of 2020, a video came out of the murder of Ahmaud Arbery, a man minding his own black business, jogging down the street. Three men followed him in a pickup truck with shotguns and killed him in the streets. I'm actually surprised at this moment that as much that has been done happened. I fully expect another George Zimmerman and actually we we can still be on that road. Like if all three of them get convicted I will be very surprised but I, I'm already surprised that all three of them were even arrested because this is not the first nor last time this this has happened to a black person specifically our black men because so often black kids don't get to be kids they automatically become black men black women Tamir Rice 12 years old but he was a black man so funny how white people can be oh he's just a boy when they're 40 years old but a 20 year old a 12 year old 14 year old all of those are men and like it's painful it's painful and it's not even like the first or last one of this year i can i can continue to name names like there's so many names I had to write them down because it's just too many you you got just you got George Floyd who was killed by a police officer kneeling on his neck for nine minutes straight do you know how long nine minutes is I Breonna Taylor shot in her home how do we have a law named after her before her murderers are arrested? Tell me what kind of sense that makes. You have the AUC kids that were pulled out of their car. One of them whose arm was broken. That, that's just downtown from where I live. Like that was near my campus of where I go to grad school where I went to undergrad. The AUC is where I got my first master's degree. Like, this this is my backyard. You got Uwatonian Salu, who, after coming out about her rape and sexual assault, disappeared, and now we find her body. We have Richard Brooks, another one in my backyard, sleeping in his car because he had too much to drink. And it's like a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation. If he drove home from drinking, then he would have been putting people's lives in danger. That's the reason to shoot him dead. He slept in the parking lot of Wendy's trying to get himself sober. But that's a danger to people. Shoot him dead. He had come from celebrating his daughter's eighth birthday. Like... Can you imagine that little girl's life from now on? That that's the memory she has of her birthday. That her father was murdered by the police. I feel like we could list these names on and on and on and nothing's gonna happen. 
because we've been doing it 400 years in this country of my people being murdered and still we're told to sit down be quiet like be patient we've been patient for 400 years people like to remember MLK as being this peaceful protester marching and everything but they ignore his letters from Birmingham jail where he talks about how messed up the American situation is we we ignore some of his most powerful quotes about how he fears he's leading his people into an already burning house. About how the moderate white is worse than the KKK member. How the riots are the voice of the unheard. Y'all like y'all MLK when he's being passive and like just you can brush him aside. But when he's in your face telling you about your racist actions. Oh, that's too much now. But we are unheard. We are screaming, I can't breathe, and being ignored. And that's why we are where we are now. The riots are the voice of the unheard. So we will riot. We will continue to protest. Honestly, I don't care if another Target or another police precinct or another Wendy's gets burned down. Corporations are okay. Corporations have insurance. Corporations can be rebuilt. You know who can't be rebuilt? George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Rashard Brooks, Aubrey. Oh, I, I just. I, I honestly, I don't even know where to go from here. Like, if you are a white viewer of mine, be a public face speaking out. Put your money where your mouth is. Donate to bail funds. Donate to Trans Lives Matter. Donate to Black Lives Matter. Donate to 8 to Abolish because fuck that 8 can't wait shit. 8 to Abolish. Because honestly, if you look into the history of why the police were created, then it is all based on a foundation of racism. And that's a whole thing we can get into. But I'm, I'm looking at my recorder. I'm already at 20 minutes. I don't know how long I'll be after I edit. Because honestly, I don't plan on editing too much out of this. Let, let you get my raw and unfiltered. Well, white, white followers, please just do what you can to uplift black voices. I, there's, there's a lot that can be done. I'm sure if you go on Twitter, look up Black Lives Matter hashtag, you will find tons of resources on where to donate, where you can help, what pro, um, petitions you can sign. I'm not going to list them here for you. I'm, I'm not doing the work for you. Sorry. Actually, not sorry at all. I'm tired of educating constantly when you can take a moment to Google. Black followers, take care of yourselves. I know it's a lot out there on social media right now. Take a break if you have to. Take care of yourself. A bubble bath isn't going to wash the racism in the world away, but if you can just have that one moment of peace, Take care of yourself. That's it for now.